I reads, consider the area under the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 2 on this interval, 0 to 3. So part A sets, says, set up a Riemann sum which approximates the area using n sub intervals of equal width with x sub i to, to the star, x, x sub i star is equal to the right endpoints of the sub interval x sub, x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. So that's just finding the, the Riemann sum. Then part two, with that Riemann sum, we're going to go ahead and uh, evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity. And they give us some, they say, note, this is equal to this, this is equal to that, and that's equal to that. Because we might use some of this information for that problem. Okay? So let's go ahead and start with part A. So part A, we need to find the Riemann sum. However, recall that we're looking, so we're looking for the area under a curve, and we're using right endpoints, so we're using rectangles with right uh, endpoints, so we need to find the, so we pretty much have that all the areas of the rectangles. So the change in x is going to be b minus a, where a is 0 and b is 3, and n sub intervals, so whatever n sub intervals we have. Then we have x sub i uh, star, that's equal to a plus i times delta x. So once we find the delta x, we'll have the delta x here, and we already have a, a is 0. So this will be the x for every right endpoint, where we're going to go ahead and plug in this x into the function yeah. to get all those y values. So we have then, we're looking for the Riemann sum, so this is going to be from i equals 1 to n. Or actually, let's go ahead and start off with, first First, we got to find the dx. Well, yes, yeah, so first we have to find dx, right? Yes, yeah, so we got to find the width of all these rectangles. Well, the width of all these rectangles is going to be b minus a, so that's 3 minus 0, that's 3, and then divided by n. So there's dx. Now, we need to find x sub i star. Okay, well, x sub i star is equal to a, but a is 0, so that's 0, plus i, so plus i, delta x, delta x we just found is 3 divided by n. So then we get that x i star is equal to just i, 3 divided by n. Okay, so now this is all the the x sub i's, so all the right endpoints, all the x values of the right endpoint. And since we want to find the area under the curve, we know we have to multiply the, the width times the length to find the area of that rectangle, and we have to add it to all the other rectangles. So to find the y value, all these x values, all we have to do is input this x value into the function. Which function? Well, the function they give us. So this is going to be then, well, x sub i star is all this, so then that's going to be i 3 divided by n um, squared plus 2. So this is our f of x sub i. So this is going to be the, the width of the rectangle, and that's going to be the length of the rectangle. So we want to find the area under the whole curve, then we do a sum, so that's where the summation comes in. That's going to be from i equals 1 to n. Once we have that, then that's f of x sub i star times the change in x, delta x. Okay? So then that is going to be um, summation as i equals 1 to n. Okay, f of x sub i star is all this. So that's going to be, um, let's write this as 3ni squared plus 2. That's all this times dx. Well, dx is 3 divided by n. So there we go. That is part A. That's your, um, the, your Riemann sum. Now, part B, so for part B, we have to take the limit of this Riemann sum as n approaches infinity. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and erase.
erase this so I can work on um, on uh, part B. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here. And I'm just going to copy it again because we just have to take the limit of this. Taking, so this is part B. Now we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity of this random sum. So that's from i equals 1 to n, and that's going to be um, 3 divided by n i squared plus 2 times So first of all, since, well first of all, let's go ahead and expand this. This is going to be 3 squared, that's 9, and i squared, n squared. Okay, so this then is the limit as n approaches infinity from i equals 1 to n of 9 divided by n squared, i squared plus 2 times 3 over n. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this uh, 3 divided by n to both these terms. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n of 27. So we have 27. 27 divided by n squared, or sorry, n cubed, right? Because we have this n times this n squared is n cubed, n times n cubed, and that's i squared. Then that's going to be plus 6 divided by n. 3 times 2, 6, and then the n at the bottom. Okay, again, since we have a, um, a summation, summation of a term plus another term, or a function plus another function, and that's just a summation of that term plus the summation of the other term. So if you have the summation of A plus B, that's the summation of A plus the summation of B. Going from the same, let's say whatever, k equals 1 to whatever, and the same, so it's the same k equals 1 to n, k equals 1 to n. So we can split them up pretty much, that's what I'm saying. We can split up the summations. So we're going to go ahead and split these summations up. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, uh, let's see, summation i equals 1 to n of 27 divided by n cubed i squared plus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 6 divided by n. Okay. Now, when we have a summation and we have a constant term, we can factor that constant term, or we can take that term out of the summation. So this then becomes, so this then becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of, so, okay, here, the constant term here is 27 divided by n cubed. So we have 27 divided by n cubed times the summation from i equals 1 to n of i squared. Then do the same thing here, plus, in this case, 6n is all a constant term, so we can bring that on the side. So we have the summation as i equals 1 to n of 1. Okay. And this is taking the limit of all this. So, let's make sure we put that like that, because the limit of this whole thing, so the limit of this whole thing. Okay, so now, this is a constant. We 
have a summation here from i equals 1 to n of i squared. However, if you look at the note section, they give us a summation of i, the summation of i squared, the summation of i cubed. So we can use the summation of i squared. The summation of i squared is all of this. So good, we can go ahead and substitute this for this, this term. Now, here we have the summation from i equals 1 to n of 1. But if you, they don't give that to us, but we can derive that very easily because all we're doing here is just adding 1 n times. So this whole thing is going to be n. Okay, so let's rewrite this. It's going to infinity. This is 27 divided by n cubed. Um, okay, so this whole thing is this. So it's going to be times n, n plus 1 n plus 2 divided by, or sorry, 2 n plus 1. So now, almost done. Now we just have a limit. So now we just have a limit of this function here plus this function. So we can take the limit of this plus the limit of this. But the limit of 6 is already 6. So all we have to do is just take the limit of this here. Okay. So that looks very familiar. Let's go ahead and erase this.